David Hay explains why Wilder would not step aside from a Fury trilogy. So, obviously, a lot of people have been coming out basically trying to say that Wilder should step aside for the trilogy. So, obviously, maybe AJ and Anthony... No, so, AJ, obviously, Anthony Joshua can take on Tyson Fury, which Eddie Hearn, obviously, was talking about potentially in December. Obviously, with everything going on, we don't even know if that trilogy would actually happen, but... Basically, everyone pretty much wants Deontay Wilder to step aside so we can have Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury first, so nothing jeopardizes that, uh, puts that fight in jeopardy. So, let me quickly get to what David Hayes actually been saying. David Hayes said, I don't think Wilder to tap a guy to step aside. Uh, obviously, this is Hay talking to Sky Sports. Yeah, he said he, be yeah, he believes he underperformed, he believes he's got to give, he's got more to give, and I like that. I like the fact that he wants to do it again. It shows it shows me what I believed. I believe he's got a big heart. I believe he's a proud, proud man. He always wants to give the best to give the best himself. He doesn't feel like he did he did in the did in his last fight, understandably. He probably watched it back and thought. Sorry guys. He probably watched it back and thought, what the hell was I doing? But he's got the opportunity to right the wrong. I love I love fighters that are willing to jump straight back in there and eradicate any doubt about them. The same, the same way Anthony Joshua could have could have had an easier fight, could have had a couple easy fights before the Andy Ruiz Jr. rematch. No, he wanted that fight. He really desperately wanted it because he knew in his heart he underperformed and he proved it. I get where both fighters' heads were at at the time of their losses. I'm pretty sure Tyson Fury would have lost that fight. I'm pretty sure if Tyson Fury would have lost that fight against Deontay Wilder. He'd be wanting to come back and right the wrong. So those are the words of David Hay. And I agree with David Hay as to the fact that Deontay Wilder is a proud, proud man because if you look at the psychology of Deontay Wilder, 41 fights, knocking guys out left, right and centre in devastating fashion. You've grown with the nickname the Bronze Bomber. Everyone's hyped up Deontay Wilder as the devastating puncher that he I still believe he is. And to go there and get beat up by Tyson Fury, I think he'll be I don't think he'll be obviously nobody wants to get beaten up like the way he, he, he like the way he lost, but I think in his psychology he would really he would want to come back and right that wrong and really knock Tyson Fury out. Which is the only way I believe he actually beats Tyson Fury. I don't believe Deontay Wilder will beat Tyson Fury if it did go twelve, which most people believe already. But I believe he wants to come back right that wrong and knock Tyson Fury. I don't see Deontay Wilder as somebody that will take step aside money. Because even if you look at the track record, the zone offered Deontay Wilder a $120 million deal to fight Dominic Brazil and fight AJ twice in the first final rematch. He turned it down. So why in the hell would he take a, a step why the hell would he take a step aside money for the ring mag for the WBC and Ring magazine? Against an opponent that he, he he got beat up by, which now he has the opportunity automatically in the contract to right a wrong, without really having to go much stress or having to really grapple for a fight where it's already in the contract. So if you look at it that way, I can see exactly the reason why Deontay Wilder would would take the fight because if you look at it, why would you not want to take an immediate title shot? Someone like Dylan White that's been clamoring for a title shot. A lot of people say, oh, it, oh, Wilder shouldn't jump straight into the trilogy. A lot of these guys are clamoring for a title shot. Why would you want to go around the block at Deontay Wilder's age of 35? It's not like he's a Joseph Parker who's like 26, where he can, obviously, if he, he, he loses and then he can, maybe by the time like he's 29, he's got another title shot. 28, he's got another title shot. Deontay Wilder's 35. He hasn't got the time to be going around the block looking for Charles Martins and... And 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 Cal Nackies and all these guys, and 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 next for you know, and those fights you can't and this is heavyweight box you can't say it's a given. What if he tries to go around the block? I said, oh, uh, I, I'll, I'll you know I'll let me go and take two warm up fights before I fight Tyson Fury again, and then he fights a uh, 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 Charles Martin, which I believe the only way to ice Charles Martin out, but it is heavyweight box. Let's say he got somehow something happened, he got clipped by Charles Martin. Everyone would just say that he should have just fought Tyson Fury in the trilogy. But at the same time, some people also say De Deontay Wilder needs to refine his skills.
But in my opinion, Deontay Wilder wins by knockout. Whether he refined his skills or didn't refine his skills, is if he beats Tyson Fury, it's going to be by knockout. In terms of how he would be able to knock Tyson Fury out, that is where the uh, the skills argument, which I I I, I, I list, uh, bend towards the skills argument a bit more, in co because the, I believe the only one needs to be able to disguise his right hand a bit more than he do he currently is. He's very fond of these days, especially telegraphing that right hand. Can't telegraph a right hand to land on Tyson Fury. You need a bit more sophistication in terms of how to set up the to set up the shot to be able to land on Tyson Fury. That's why it might be quite interesting what George Foreman might be able to bring in for Deontay Wilder in the camp. Because I think I saw somewhere that he might be in Deontay Wilder's strength team. So it'll be quite interesting to see in terms of his strategy to defeat Tyson Fury. But overall, in terms of whether Deontay Wilder should step aside from Tyson, step aside from the Tyson Fury trilogy, I feel like I think Deontay Wilder should take the trilogy, in my opinion, because. As David Hayes said, uh, as David Hayes said here, he says that obviously. Let me quickly get to it. He said he he said that he probably believed that Deontay Wilder believes that he underperformed, and that he's got more to give. And I actually believe that Deontay Wilder does actually believe he underperformed, and he does have more to give. And obviously, with this, obviously before the trilogy was meant to take place in July, but now it's taking place in October. As they say, I think it's meant to be October 3rd. I think Deontay Wilder has a lot more time to with his to watch the video and see what he did wrong and see what he he has to do it in the in the in the trilogy in order to defeat Tyson Fury. It allows him to not rush into it and be like, okay, I need to go there now. I need to take home Tyson Fury now and knock Tyson Fury out with only two months. He's got more time to you know calculate his thoughts, talk with his team, and. Think about what is how what is the best strategy to defeat Tyson Fury, especially now bringing on George Foreman into his team. Apparently, I think that's a good move for Deontay Wilder because it show he show, it shows that he knows that he needs some extra help, extra support in order to you know devise a game plan and do the right things in order to defeat Tyson Fury. So I believe that it, I believe Deontay Wilder should take the trilogy because. I want to see the the top fighters fight each other. I don't want to see Deontay Wilder take two um, interim fights against uh, Andy Ruiz, uh, let's say Kaunaki, for example, and somehow Andy Ruiz beats Deontay Wilder. Like, <laughs> if Andy Ruiz beats Deontay Wilder, are we going to see AJ versus Deontay Wilder anytime soon? I don't know. Because Deontay Wilder with no titles, losing to someone that AJ beat, like, I don't want to see Deontay Wilder getting beat by certain guys. And then all of a sudden, he's falling at the wayside. I want to see Deontay Wilder. Because of that power he's got, I still want to see him the top echelon of, of fighters. I want to see him fight Tyson Fury. And even if he was to lose to Tyson Fury in the trilogy. And then Deontay Wilder, no, and then Tyson Fury fights AJ for the Undisputed. They're still, I, I still feel like... I still feel, I still feel like yeah I still feel like I I I will still I still for me I still want to I still want to see AJ versus Anthony Joshua and having looked at the rankings even if Deontay Wilder was to actually lose to Tyson Fury in the trilogy I don't know if that loss would affect his rankings in the WBA or not but Deontay Wilder is actually ranked number two in the WBA so. Deontay Wilder was to take on Tyson Fury and lose. Deontay Wilder still has a route to the world title. He's ranked number two in the WBA. I think Trevor Bryan is ranked number one in the WBA. So there could be a route for Deontay Wilder back to the title, world title, if he was to actually lose to uh, uh, lose to Tyson Fury in the trilogy. Because if Deontay Wilder was to lose to Tyson Fury in the trilogy and then set up a fight with American Trevor Bryan, knock him out, and then all of a sudden, he, he, Deontay Wilder's pushing himself as a mandatory challenger to most likely, or let me not say most likely, could actually be Anthony Joshua. So, it, so actually, the fact that Deontay, there's no actually, Deontay Wilder might not actually be out of big time boxing just because he loses to Tyson Fury in the trilogy. There is a route for him in the WBA, but as I said again, I want to see Deontay Wilder in the trilogy. 
because I don't want to see him go fight no interim fights and then get beat by some guys and all of a sudden we're not seeing Deontay Wilder in the top fights because the guy can punch. I want to see him there. With, I, I, I just want to see Wilder fight Anthony Joshua. Let me put it that way. I don't want to see him fall at the wayside and all of a sudden, you know, people, it's just all about risk and reward. If Deontay Wilder gets, get, uh, uh, takes some interim fights and he gets beat by Andy Ruiz, his stock is going to go down, especially after getting beat by Tyson Fury. And then all of a sudden, I don't know if the vibe for seeing AJ Wilder is going to be the same. That's why I still want to see Wilder take on Tyson Fury in the trilogy. And then if he loses the trilogy, if he wins the trilogy, then he can set up an undisputed against AJ. If That's if he wins the trilogy. If he loses the trilogy against Tyson Fury, then he still has a route he can take through the WBA if he's still ranked number two. So that's my opinion uh, I agree with David Hay that obviously that Tyson that Deontay Wilder is a proud man with the bronze bomber persona, devastating knockouts left, right, and center. He's been hyped up as the hardest puncher in the heavyweight division, hardest puncher of all time, and to just go there, take step aside money, and then go, and then and then not even <laughs> not fight Tyson Fury. I don't think I don't see that as some as part of something Deontay Wilder will do. On the other hand. If Deontay Wilder was to accept step aside money and then mandate put get somehow get something put in the contract between Joshua and Fury that one of them must fight and uh, not to um let me put it this way to you know speak to Tyson Fury's team and somehow the contract between AJ and Fury something is stipulated that the winner must fight Deontay Wilder would that be a good move for Deontay Wilder maybe but. Wouldn't Deontay Wilder have to fight somebody in the interim before, you know, he can't just wait around for AJ versus Tyson Fury. He might have to fight someone in the interim. And I don't want to see Deontay Wilder fight at Andy Ruiz and then somehow get beat. I I, I just don't. I, I want to see this the way I want it to pan out. I want Deontay Wilder to take on Tyson Fury. If Tyson Fury, if Deontay Wilder wins, I want to see these two big punches in AJ versus Wilder take on each other. If Wilder was to lose, uh, then I would still want to see AJ versus Wilder, but I think it would be much less likely to happen in terms of stock. And obviously, people Eddie Hearn has had a reputation of talking about Wilder can't sell and all that. Would Eddie Hearn put AJ in with Wilder, who he says can't sell tickets and is a big puncher, and then Anthony Joshua, who hasn't got that you know that tight that tight defense that Tyson Fury's got, been able to ride shots, slip shots. And all this kind of stuff. Would he risk a wild? Would he risk putting AJ in with Wilder? No belt, Wilder. Uh, Wilder, who's who, who, who lost to uh, Tyson Fury and potentially could have taken an interim loss. I don't think Eddie Hearn will take that risk. So I want to see AJ versus Wilder fight. That is what I want to see. So the way I'd like to see, I'd like to see Wilder take on AJ. Wilder take on Fury in the trilogy. If he beats a, if he beats Fury, he could take on AJ. And if 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 Wilder was to lose to Fury, he still has the route through the WBA rank number two. He could potentially find a route to AJ through there if AJ still has the belt. So drop your comments in the comment section below. What do you think about David Hay saying Wilder will not step aside from the Fury trilogy? Drop your comments in the comment section below. Cool.